What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and in this video I want to talk about the baits that I have packed for the month of February. Alright, so the first one, the first bait that I'm going to pull out specifically when the water temperature is below 40 degrees, these bass are starting to pre-spawn, they're getting out of their winter holes and they're moving towards the back of the creeks. They're gonna get on points, they're gonna get on deep, you know, 45 degree um, uh, banks and they're just gonna be working their way back. And one of the best baits to cover water with is a jerk bait. Now I'm just starting to pack this box for a tournament I've got at the end of this month on Lake Murray. But jerk baits are incredible for catching those fish while they're still lethargic. Now, I've got several different types of jerk baits, and down in the description, I'm gonna leave a link to every single bait that I talk about and even suggestions of baits that I may not pull out of the boxes, but they are the ones that I like to use the most. But anyway, I've got a, a deep diving Loco Special from 13 Fishing. This one is a great suspending jerk bait when it's super, super cold, and I wanna get down to about the 10 foot depth. I've got one that goes down to three to five feet. And then I've got uh, some old Lucky Crafts that, don't, that they don't make anymore and some Strike King uh, jerk baits, the KVD jerk baits. And they're all super clear. I'm, gonna, I'm only gonna fish these if the water is super, super clear. Four foot visibility or more. Any less visibility than that, they're really not worth it. So I'm hoping to find some clear water on Murray. Now I'm gonna leave a, a link that is in the description to a video that I have made about fishing jerk baits, but you're gonna, jerk, you're gonna fish it with fluorocarbon 10, 12 pound test on a medium, moderate action rod with a seven, three to one. Gear ratio really doesn't matter because of the way you, you use it or the way you work it, but I like a seven, three or an eight, three to one gear ratio just to pick up line. So that's it for the jerk bait. Let's talk about the next one. All right, so the next bait. This is my favorite time of the year to fish a jig. And a jig is something that really can put a lot of big fish in the boat, especially this time of the year. Same sort of deal. You're looking for them on, on hard bottom points, working towards the backs of, of creek arms or pockets that have water running into the back of them and that kind of stuff. But you're really gonna, gonna love it when you get a jig bite. You're gonna fish a jig. I like a three eighths to a half ounce jig. I don't usually fish anything heavier or anything lighter. Uh, I'm dragging it on the bottom. And again, link the, to a video about it right here and you guys be able to watch it. But the key to a jig this time of the year is not only the action, but the trailer, okay? So what I've got here is I've got a green fish tackle skipping jig, um, great dragon jig, but the trailer can make or break you. Trailers I use when the water temperature is below 55 degrees don't have a whole lot of action. I've got a, a, super, a Zoom Super Chunk Junior, and I've got a 13 fish fishing caboose craw, and I wanna show you what I'm talking about. You know how with the Rage Craws and stuff like that, Rage Craws have a lot of kick to them. Well, these have just the opposite. You want them to have as little kick as possible. And I just cut my fingernails, so it's hard to get into these boxes. But I want you to look at the craws, okay? See how the craws don't have anything to make them kick a lot? This one doesn't kick a whole lot and it's small. This one is like a medium to a large size. So I'm going to alternate between these two to figure out what size bait the, the, the bass want. But these two are going to be the only ones I'm using when it's cold. Very, very, this one is awesome. I mean, it's got, what I love about the caboose craw, it does have those big, long claws. And it does have a little bit of action, but it's not like a choppy action. They wave really good on the fall. I'll bite a little bit of it off to shorten it up a little bit and slide it on the jig. So another type, good type of jig to use for this is not just a skipping jig from, from Greenfish. You can also use a football jig, anything that is really good at dragging around rocks and hard bottom. I'm gonna fish it on a seven foot three medium heavy or a seven four heavy action rod. Eight one to one gear ratio reel just because I need to be able to pick up line really fast if that bass picks it up and swims towards me. Um, and 20 pound test cigar fluorocarbon. Uh, and that's my setup. That's what I'm going to fish it on. But like I said, I'll leave a link up here for the, you just click on that little eye and it'll, uh, it'll take you to all the links to all these videos, but you'll be able to watch exactly how I fish it and stuff like that. Awesome, man. I am like a kid in a candy store on a jig bite, but you can't beat it. All right. So the next one is probably yeah, up there in my first top one or two baits for the spring. 
And isn't this a beautiful box? Chatterbaits. The reason I say this is most probably my favorite one is just a few couple of weeks ago down in Florida, I brought home $1,600 fishing one of these things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've got in the box because there are three different types of bladed jigs or chatterbaits that I fish. Number one is, of course, the jackhammer. Now, the jackhammer by, by Z-Man is... To me, it's the best one there is, and it is the most expensive. It's got the best hook, it's got the best clip, it's got the best blade, it's got the best of everything, and tied skirt, um, but it makes plenty of noise and it really does catch them. So uh, the jackhammer is number one. The second one is a Strike King Thunder Cricket. Okay, and the reason I say a Thunder Cricket, and, and these two go hand in hand, the Thunder Cricket is not as loud as the Jackhammer. A lot of times when the water is super cold, um, you can throw a Thunder Cricket that's a little bit quieter, still has the nice tight wiggle that you want, and it'll get more bites just because it's not as invasive. And so I love to throw a Thunder Cricket. Now I'm about to make a video about this. It goes into detail about all the chatterbaits and what's changed since my last chatterbait video, but this one is my second one. And the third one is the shock blade from Picasso. This is the football shock blade. And it's got a tungsten head. It's uh, got a neat little way that it, that it connects the blade. Now the most important thing, and the reason why I only use these three, uh, these three chatterbaits, is that the blade connects directly to the eye of the jig, or in the Picasso's, uh, Picasso's one, and I'm gonna try to get a little closer for you guys. It's got a different way of connecting it that doesn't infringe on any patents but it's still, you get the same kind of tight wiggle, it starts up really fast, and you get a lot of knock on that head, which is what you want. And so, and it's tungsten, so it's a different sound, and that's another reason. So, those are the three that I use. You fish them on a medium heavy moderate action rod, or a medium heavy fast action rod, depending on, like down in Florida, I was ripping it through a lot of grass and stuff like that, so I wanted a little bit stiffer rod, so I could didn't have to rip it as hard sitting in my kayak. Uh, but mostly and usually I fish it on the chatter crank rod from 13 fishing which is a stiffer moderate action medium heavy, medium heavy rod and it is just made for chatterbaits probably the best one of the best chatterbait rods on the market in my opinion and my opinion doesn't matter because I'm sponsored by them but anyway so uh, a, a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel 20 pound test fluorocarbon straight fluorocarbon you can use braid if you want to but I tend to when I use braid I tend to rip and and destroy the clips on any one of the chatterbaits. So I try to stay away from it as much as possible unless I really am having trouble getting it through the grass. Then I'll switch to braid. But anyway, chatterbait man, I'm telling you, if you're not fishing it, you're missing out. So this one is kind of a bonus bait and it goes somewhere along the lines of a chatterbait and a crankbait and a flat side, which we'll talk about in a minute, but that is the new Jabberjaw. It's something I'm really, really excited about. This sucker right here, uh, it's got the sound, the rattle of a, of a chatterbait. So the, the metal blade hits some metal cheeks that are inside the, ba inside the bait. Makes a ton of noise. Now, the metal blade, being the fact that it moves back and forth, you'll find that it tightens the wiggle a lot on the bait, which is what you want. Typically, I don't like to fish big, fat uh, crankbaits in the, in the early spring. I like flat side, but this one kind of acts like a flat side. It's not quite as tight, but it's tighter than a, than a wide body crankbait but the noise is incredible um, and it catches fish. I'm just, this will be the first spring that I've used it. So I can't give you my 100% opinion on it in the spring. I just know with that noise and with that tight wiggle, it's gonna catch them. So definitely the Jabberjaw is on my list. I'm gonna fish it on medium moderate action rod, uh, maybe a medium heavy moderate depending, but uh, I just can't wait, dude. It's just gonna be slick. So these baits are my bread and butter. Uh, this is These are the types of baits that I've fi been fishing in pre-spawn for many, many years. Um, and they work and produce every single year, no matter what body of water I'm on, except for Florida because they're crankbaits and crankbaits and grass just don't mix most of the time. But these are flat-sided crankbaits, okay? And I'm gonna pick up a couple of them that I've got sitting right here and show them to you. Okay, that's just a few of the flat-sided crankbaits I've got, and I'm going to talk about each one of them I've got laid out. But when I say flat-sided crankbaits, guys, I ain't kidding. And you'll notice what I'm looking at, what you're looking at. You're looking at two, ma three major colors, orange, red, and yellow. Crawfish colors in the springtime. 
Most of these are flat-sided crankbaits or somewhere similar uh, that have a tight wiggle. The ones I've got laid out, number one, the Bomber Flat A. This sucker right here is a pain in the butt to cast. But I'm telling you, it catches fish. I sometimes, when I get so frustrated with it on a medium moderate action rod, bait caster, I'll switch to a, a spinning rod just so I can cast it a little bit better. Um, but it catches them, and I don't know why. It's just a great little tight wiggle. Runs about five to six feet deep. The next one is, as you can tell, I have destroyed this one over the years. And it's actually, this one needs to be retired because I've been using it so much and it's got cracked bill and everything else. This is a six cents flat 75. It is, it was made and designed for early pre-spawn fishing. It's got very little rattle. It's got one little bitty thumper in there that doesn't really make a whole lot of noise. Got that tight wiggle. It dies. I can get it down to seven feet deep with 10 pound test floral, but I would recommend you fishing on 15, maybe 12 and, and deal with it getting down to about six feet deep. Just a great, great bait, and I've got it in two different colors. Actually, I've got several different colors, but these are the two colors I'm going to throw the most. Is a bright, bright orange, and then this one, which is called Brown Eyed Special. I might need to order a couple of them before you guys get on Tackle Warehouse. But anyway, those are the two colors I love to use. The next one is kind of a downsize, flat-sided uh, in spring craw. This is a, a Spro um, a Little John is what this one is and I make sure I get the one with the with the uh, the chip bill whatever you call it the uh, the computer chip bill and it's just one of those that you can cover a lot of water in and it's a kind of a square bill and it gets through cover really well and if I just need to cover a ton of water it casts like a dream and I really fish it fish it you can fish it fast you can fish it slow and it's not going to turn over on its side now this one I haven't fished yet but I'm definitely going to put this one to work this year because it's new on the market and it's exactly like some of the old ones that you can't find anymore. And this is the Fritz side from, from Berkeley. Fritz, 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 yeah, Fritz, Fritz sided. Uh, and it's just a really, really, it just looks to me like it's going to do everything that I want it to do. And then some, um, I got two or three different sizes. It's weighted, so it's probably going to cast good. I just can't wait to fish it, but that's the Fritz side. All right, so basically what I'm going to throw it on is I'm going to throw it on, first of all, the line's going to be 10 to 12 pound test, straight fluorocarbon. Um, I use a Brazex mainly because, and that's a Seaguar Brazex, mainly because I'm ripping it through grass, I'm ripping it out of out of uh, wood, I'm banging it off of rocks, I really want that abrasion resistance. Uh, and then the, a 6-3 to 1 or a 7-3 to 1 gear ratio reel and a medium moderate action rod, somewhere around 7 feet would be perfect for this. Definitely, definitely be throwing a, a flat-sided uh, flat sided bait this time of the year. I'm telling you, I have caught some giants on these baits. And last, but definitely not least, let's see if I can do this without dumping them out, are my lipless crankbaits. Okay, now most of these up here will not be used. I'm going to be using the red ones, and I've got several different brands that I have, and I'll switch around with them until the bass tell me which one they want. All right, so I pulled a few baits out of the box. Mainly, these are the ones that I'm gonna be cycling through until the bass tell me which ones they want. And then I'm gonna also be playing around with retrieves and stuff like that. I'll leave another link to a video right up here. But let's start from right to left. What I've got here is I've got the 13 Fishing Magic Man. This is the 65 is the one I'm gonna start with. It's, the, it's a small one, but it's a half ounce. And um, I haven't really played around with them much, so I'm not going to give you 100% surety of what they do. From what I've played with them, though, they don't roll when you fish them really fast. And I have a real fast retrieve I, I use this time of the year. But uh, but main thing is crawl patterns and sound. This one has a lot, has a, a few little little BBs in it. Doesn't make a whole lot of sound. If I move up to the bigger one, it just makes it has a whole lot more BBs and makes a whole lot of sound. So I love to. Keep the sound as little as possible to start with. So the Magic Man. The next one is I'm gonna be cycling through two different sounds. This is the Strike King Red Eye Shad. Now, they come in the two tap, which is this one, and the regular one, which has a lot of BBs and a higher pitch sound. And I'm gonna be cycling between those two to figure that out. 
the thing about this one is they work great at like regular speed to slow speed, but when you start to speed up and go really fast, they'd like to turn on their side a little bit and you don't get bit nearly as much. So they have their place, but if the bass want it fast, it's not going to be this one. The next one is one I found last year that I love. And this is the uh, Ozuma, and I never can remember that, Shaker Z. And the reason I love it, and I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see it. I have a white one somewhere, but I can't find it. I'll have to look in my boxes and see. But the what I love about the Shaker Z is it's 100% silent. Has no rattles in it. So it can sneak up on a fish, and it really does get really good reaction bites. You don't really want to fish it super fast because I can't hear it coming. So I fish it moderately speed to slow speed. But if I if I think that they are kind of beat up and they they're high pre they've been pressured a lot, I'm going to switch to a silent one and and see if that works. Three more. The next one's going to be the the Booyah one knocker. Now this used to be the Excalibur one knockers, which were amazing, and Booyah bought them out and changed the name and everything else. But anyway, one simple little knocker casts like a dream. And it's just one of those things where it's just all about sound for me on this one. If they don't like it, I, it, it doesn't take me long to figure that out. And I throw it in a box and I switch to another one. Um, if I want to burn it, if I want to go super, super fast, the only one that I found on the market that does not roll on its side, no matter how fast you go, and I troll this thing sometimes at four or five miles an hour, that is the Spro Rukushad. Okay, this one right here, no matter how fast you go, it will not turn on its side. And also when it lands on the bottom, it lands nose down, the hooks stay out like this, and it doesn't get snagged nearly as much if you're yo-yoing it. But what I love about it, like I said, is the speed. I can run this thing super fast. It's got a lot of high-pitched rattles in it, so it makes a lot of noise, and it's one of those things the bass hear it coming, and all of a sudden it's past them, and they've got to catch up to it. And you'd be amazed at how fast a bass can move to get one of those things. Last but not least is the bread and butter. This is the rattle trap, <laughs> the Bill Lewis rattle trap. I've got several different orange and red colors that I'll use. This one right here is really good when I'm fishing grass and I'm ripping it out of grass. It does not move, it does not work when you're fishing really, really fast. But when you're doing a stop and go, it has a lot of reaction fall and, and uh, or, or reactive falls and it darts left and right and that kind of stuff. And you can get a lot of really good bites on it. But the between that one and all the rest of them, I guarantee I'm going to find a, a pattern and going to find a bite where the bass will take it all the way down in their, in their throat, and you're not going to miss them, and they're going to absolutely love them. I'm going to be throwing this thing probably 50% of the time until they, they tell me they don't want it, and I'm going to. it's just one of those things that I get really, really excited. My earliest lipless crankbait video, I smoked giants in pre-spawn doing exactly that and fishing this color these color crankbaits but the lipless crankbaits the flat sides the jerk baits the jigs the chatter baits that's the kind of stuff you're going to want in your boat uh or in your kayak or in your bag anywhere when you're fishing in the pre-spawn the bass are going to love them and it's going to catch you a lot of fish uh but those are the baits for february the next video i'm going to do is the baits for march Stay tuned. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.